Oh, yeah. Welcome to the show. This is a brief wrestling uncensored update here. WWE has released a number of talents, a number of backstage people. We are here with a wrestling uncensored breaking news update here. I'm Dave Simon. He's Johnny North. And, uh, John, we got to uh, talk about all the releases. People have been asking us questions all day. We decided to put out this video here uh, so we can kind of update people on what's going on. The WWE releasing a slew of talent. Obviously, every company in the world having to do some setbacks. Everybody going through some economic issues right now. And the WWE is no exception. Without a live gate, without that live attendance, those tickets sold... Well, the WWE is missing out on a ton of profit right now, and you can understand why they might be releasing some talent, but they released a lot. I wonder how much of this talent was going to get released otherwise, and I wonder how much of this talent, you know, just got released because of budget cuts. A real interesting list. Uh, some of these names you'll recognize, some you won't, right? You will recognize Rusev, Rusev Pudria, Rusev Machka. Released by the WWE. Uh, we could talk about that in a second. I feel like that was a long time coming. Uh, let's start with Rusev here. We'll get to some of the other names. Rusev, Rusev Pudria, released by the WWE. What does this mean for Lana, who's still on TV with Bobby Lashley, but she is the real-life wife of Miroslav, of Rusev? A lot of people expect Rusev as a top name to be headed over to AEW. We've talked about Rusev for a while. We kind of knew that he was on the way out. This is... Less shocking than I think most of the wrestlers that we're seeing on this list, right? We got people like um, No Way Jose, Carl Anderson, Luke Gallows, Sarah Logan, Drake Maverick, Kurt Hawkins, Zack Ryder, Heath Slater, a ton of talents. But Rusev coming out right off the bat wasn't the big surprise of this group. Well, you saw in Raw, he wasn't being used that much. When he was used, it was kind of like, oh yeah, here's Rusev. There wasn't really much of a storyline anymore for him. He lost all the time to Bobby Lashley, so it seemed like they were writing him off anyways. And I think instead of just letting his contract expire, they just decide, well, we'll just cut ties now and save more money. Well, it makes a lot of sense. I feel like Rusev wanted out from the company. I think that he's been saying a lot of things uh, that, that give me the impression that he didn't want to be there anymore. I think that whole thing with Bob Lashley and his wife Lana didn't turn out for Rusev. A lot of TV time, a lot of exposure, but in the end, he lost to Bobby Lashley. He lost his wife, and uh, you know he wasn't really seen on TV. So they didn't really do any favors for Rusev in that storyline other than give him that TV time. And then they basically took him off TV ever since. I think the guy, obviously, he's got size. He's got skill in the ring. He's a talented guy. He's charismatic. He can cut a promo. He is one of the most talented and underused guys in the WWE. As far as underused talent, Rusev is right there. He got over with the Rusev Day thing, and the WWE just never capitalized on him. So I think a company like AEW or even New Japan, I think if New Japan can get up and running here in the next couple of months, hopefully by the summer, midsummer, we can see some wrestling resume in Tokyo and the rest of Japan. And I think Rusev would make one hell of a contribution over in Japan. Could you imagine a match like uh, Jeff Cobb versus Rusev? You know, the matches that are out there for Rusev are tremendous, either in AEW, uh, Ring of Honor, MLW, NWA, Impact Wrestling, New Japan, uh, DDT, wherever Rusev finds himself, whatever promotion Rusev lands in, I think he's going to be a tremendous asset. A lot of people want to see him in AEW because they're familiar with Rusev, they're familiar with AEW, and they think that he would make a great impact there. I agree. I think that he would be a great asset to AEW, but I think any company that gets him does very well with him. I think Miroslav is a great talent, and we're going to see a lot more of this guy going forward. I don't think he's done in the wrestling business. No, I don't think he's done either. It's just... It's likely at some point he's probably going to go to AEW because they're still running, unlike the other companies. So I think the chances are higher with AEW. But I also feel like if you look at a lot of people that got released, a lot of people could go to AEW if you look at the talent. So is AEW going to sign everyone? I don't think so. 
but hopefully a guy like Rusev will get signed. Well, exactly. That's the other thing, you know, is is AEW going to sign everyone? Everybody's saying, what about this guy? What about that guy for AEW? If you're AEW, you got to look at things. You know, you're also not making a ton of money right now. You sign a new TV contract. That's good. But live attendance, nothing. No dollars coming in. No fans, no money. T-shirt sales are down. Merch sales altogether are down. Ticket sales are non-existent. So they're not making a ton of money to go ahead and start signing a bunch of these wrestlers that the WWE has let go. I think that they will wind up signing one, two, maybe three or four of them. But don't look for everybody on this list to show up in AEW. Carl Landerson and Luke Gallows, I think, would make sense going back to Japan. They would make sense going to AEW. Those are going to be some hot free agents. I think that there are certain people on this list that are going to be looked at as some seriously hot free agents right now in professional wrestling. I think the top free agents that have just come out of this right now Got to be Rusev number one, right? John, on this list, is anybody a hotter free agent right now than Rusev? I think Rusev, Carl Anderson, Luke Gallows, even EC3, um, a guy like uh, Rowan as well, just based on how familiar people are with him right now, how much exposure TV-wise he got with the WWE recently, and how big he is, I think Rowan is going to be a hot free agent uh as well but as far as the the list i'd put rusev at the top of my list if i were a wrestling company looking to sign people from this recent list of releases from wwe would you put rusev at at number one on your draft selection if you had to draft these guys well i put the revival number one but they're not part of this list right they were already released but they're still yeah. free agents yeah and that I happened last week them. though yeah, but I definitely would see them in AEW before anyone else because them and the Young Bucks, I think that has to happen. And I think it's very intriguing that they have a pay-per-view coming up, which is going to happen. Double or Nothing is going to happen May 23rd. So it makes it very interesting who could show up at that pay-per-view. I'd put Rusev over the Revival as far as uh, who I'd want to sign. I'm sure that they'll sign the Revival, though. I'm not sure if they'll sign Rusev. I think that they should. Um... Rowan, again, Rowan, big guy, a lot of potential there. He was a tag team partner with Luke Harper, now Brody Lee, who's the leader of the Dark Order. There's a tie-in to either bring him in as backup for the Dark Order, as backup for Brody Lee, or to bring him in as opposition for Brody Lee. I think uh, a guy like Eric Rowan could still generate some serious money as far as uh, a contract right now in pro wrestling. I think a lot of wrestling companies would love to have a guy like Rowan, especially given how big he is and the lack of big, I'm talking about large size, tall free agents right now in professional wrestling. You know, there are a lot of guys that are, you know, average size, but giants like Eric Rowan are pretty rare right now. Uh, a company like AEW, you know, a lot of people critique them, say they're undersized. They've gained some size recently, bringing on Lance Archer and Brody Lee, but I think uh, Rowan as well would be a good addition. Rusev and Rowan would add some uh, good size, some some nice beef there, pal, on that AEW roster. You're not wrong about that, but you also may mention that they just signed a bunch of new people recently, Brody Lee, Matt Hardy as well, now they're going to sign a bunch of new people again. Uh, it's hard to believe that, again, everyone's going to get signed. I could see Revival. The club would be great, but are they going to sign two tag teams? It seems like a lot. Rusev, uh, all the singles, I think he's the best one to choose. But that's about it, I think. EC3 has shown that he can get over. He can be a talented guy. I mean, he's a really good wrestler. He's in really good shape. He can talk. EC3, I think, is going to do well outside of WWE. They never used him in any kind of way. You put him in Impact, back in Impact, where he was a world champion. You put him in Ring of Honor, NWA. EC3 is, is going to make a good run of it. Like, EC3, we haven't seen the last of this guy. He is going to do well outside of WWE. He was wasted in that company. We all know it. 
Right, and I think he's friends with maybe the Bucks or even Kenny. Like, I think he wrestled those guys like in PWG. So I, I definitely think he'll probably be there eventually. It's just, again, do they have the space right now for him? Because, again, they still have a decent roster already. How surprised would you be to see No Way Jose show up in AEW? Very surprised. But it's nice that he had a job to begin with that on Raw. I mean, I thought he did an okay job for what he had. Do you think anybody – I mean – I feel bad, like, joking around about No Way Jose, but, like, you know, No Way Jose. It was kind of a joke character to begin with. You never really saw much from him. He wasn't, you know, the best wrestler. Like, guys like that, guys like No Way Jose, I wonder how that works out for them. Like, you know, he's not in WWE anymore. Is he still going to be wrestling in, like, three, four years, or... Is he one of those guys that was in WWE and then, you know, like maybe he'll prove me wrong. Maybe in five years he'll come back to WWE and be like, man, can you believe how good No Way Jose is? Maybe he'll go to New Japan and like kill it, you know? Maybe he'll become the next Juice Robinson. But like he's one of those guys where I see No Way Jose. I'm like, well, I wonder. Like this could go either way. Like Rusev, he's got a bright future in wrestling. Anderson and Gallows, they're lifers. They're good brothers, you know? Primo and Epico, they could go back to Puerto Rico, run Puerto Rico for the rest of their lives, and be all right. But no way, Jose. Like, does he go to Puerto Rico for a year or two? Does he fizzle out? Like, these stories always interest me. Like, these guys that you never really hear of before WWE, then they're in WWE, and they're stars, quote-unquote stars, and then outside of WWE when they're done, a lot of them just kind of disappear from wrestling altogether. You know, a lot of these guys are lifers. They were wrestling before the WWE. Kurt Hawkins, he's been released by WWE. He will keep wrestling. He's got a wrestling school, create a pro wrestling. You know, he's going to stay in the business. But other guys, you wonder. Yeah, I think you wonder. But it's also even harder now because independents are pretty much shut down right now. Given this whole pandemic, it's kind of hard just to wrestle, period. So people might just stop wrestling because they have to. They have no choice, and they have to do something else. And then who knows when wrestling will start up again for independence. So maybe they'll have to do something else, and they get attached to that more. Well, AEW continues to do shows. They do have uh, their double or nothing pay-per-view set for the end of May. So, you know, as long as they're stu still doing programming and new programming, there's going to be room to sign some of these people, hopefully find some jobs for these pro wrestlers. Diana Perrazzo got her Raw debut a couple weeks ago, losing to Nia Jax. She was released by the WWE. She was in NXT. I think she'll find her way to AEW. I think she'll be a great addition to their women's division. She's one of those under the radar that people aren't thinking about that much because of all the stars released, but I think she's going to be a solid wrestler. I think she's another one that's not going anywhere. And I wouldn't be surprised to see her turn up in a major company very soon. Sooner rather than later. Like, sooner than a lot of these others that you might not see for a bit. Well, AEW definitely probably needs more women in their division. There's no question about that. So that's possible. It also wasn't her Raw debut. I think she wrestled Charlotte a couple weeks ago. But I guess oh, okay. it's the most recent. All right. Well, how about Sarah Logan? Sarah Logan, who was a member of the Riot Squad... Now gone from the WWE, they released Sarah Logan, and she's married to one of the Viking Raiders. And the Viking Raiders still, you know, on the roster. So that's uh, uncomfortable, for sure. That sucks. I feel bad for Sarah Logan. I don't think they ever really gave her much of a shot. Well, again, they're just cutting costs for now. I mean, a year from now, or hope maybe might be even longer, who knows. But... I think they might hire a lot of these people back. So I could see someone like her get hired back. Yeah, hopefully. Hopefully she uh, she finds a job in pro wrestling because I, I think she's a solid pro wrestler. Anderson and Gallows, you know, we mentioned those guys. AJ Styles doesn't have backup anymore. I guess Undertaker took those guys out. Well, it's too bad because they had recently re-signed with WWE. And now they get cut now. So that's that's really too bad, but... In the end, maybe this might be good for them because if they could get a deal like Chris Jericho has where he wrestles AEW and New Japan, that could be very beneficial for them. Those guys are great wrestlers. They're a great tag team. Again, underused in the WWE. 
I'm not concerned about those guys. They're going to do fine because they're awesome, and they're going to get paid to do pro wrestling because uh, you'd have to be dumb not to pay those guys. They're a tremendous force. Uh, so Anderson and Gallows, you know, I expect to show up in AEW or New Japan as soon as possible. If I were New Japan or AEW, I'd be calling those guys immediately to try and sign them because, you know, if you're a tag team division, you want those guys in it. I'm surprised WWE let those guys go. They're one of the most solid tag teams that they have in their weak, weak tag team divisions, both of them weak. The fact that they let a solid team like that go is a little bit surprising. Drake Maverick also let go. He's still in the Cruiserweight Championship Tournament. I guess he's not winning. Well, he said three matches. I don't know if he actually went that far. I, I imagine he probably lost his first match, but still, it's nice that he played that up, that he has a chance. It also shows you, I guess they taped NXT. NXT is not live, I guess. Guess not. That's too bad, but I guess it's good for Drake that, you know, he's still on TV at least. You get to actually see him wrestle because he wasn't wrestling at all. Like, he was like a GM. He was one of the last GMs in WWE, so at least he got to go out and finally wrestle. Well, he's a talented guy. You know, he can talk. He can wrestle. He was in Impact for a long time. Maybe he'll find his way back there. I don't know. Uh, Mike and Maria Kanellis also released. I think Mike wanted his release, so this makes sense, right? Well, again, this is another person that didn't want to wrestle, wanted to quit. They wouldn't let him quit, and then he re-signed anyways. And then he still wasn't used at all. I think he was somewhat used on 205 every now and then. And now they finally released him. Like, And now he's, I guess, sad about it. Everyone's sad about it. it, it it's a two, it's terrible situation, but there's nothing they can really do, unfortunately. They have to cut costs. It's too bad, but it's the way it is. It happens and everybody's feeling it, right? It's not just the WWE. Millions of people around the world are feeling this. Uh, we're feeling it as well. Uh, Kurt Hawkins gets let go. Zack Ryder as well. Zack Ryder's been with the company forever. Former Intercontinental Tag Team Champion. The guy's done a lot in the WWE. Woo, woo, woo. You know it. The Internet Champion. No longer with WWE, but I have a feeling that Zack Ryder will find his way in pro wrestling. The guy is super talented. I would uh, I would sign him if I were Ring of Honor, AEW, any kind of wrestling company I think would be great to have Zack Ryder. He's a talented guy. He knows how to get over. The only problem with him is the WWE didn't want him to get over when he did. That's really the only sin that he ever committed here, Zack Ryder. I feel bad for Zack Ryder. I think he got a raw deal from WWE, and if he would have left the company years ago, I think he probably would be a bigger star today. Well, I don't feel bad for Zack Ryder. He was with the company, what, more than 10 years at least? Like, I think he's okay in terms of his finances, and I think he also has like, a YouTube show, or he's going to restart his YouTube show again. He'll find a way to get himself out there I'm not too worried about that. Even going back to the club, like they're probably going to go on Jericho's uh, podcast because Jericho wanted them on the podcast before, but WWE wouldn't let them. So, I mean, they're going to get over just by being other forms of entertainment, these guys. Hell yeah, brother. Talking shop is coming back, Hoot. I can't wait. So there's other ways for these guys to um, make their money in, in the world. Uh, Kurt Hawkins has a wrestling school. Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins have that uh, Major Brothers uh, f action figure podcast and YouTube show. I watch it. I think it's great. I really, I'm into the wrestling action figures now. I have all sorts of toys and they have, well, for my son. I buy them for my son. It's not for me. I'm not like Ryder and Hawkins who buy them for themselves. But I watch, you know, because I'm consuming these things. I'm buying these things. So I watch their show. And it's fascinating, uh, all the, the variations of action figures and everything that they're into. So those guys are lifers in pro wrestling. They're not going anywhere. Eric Young, another guy. You know, whatever happened to Don't Fire Eric? That was a TNA thing. WWE didn't get the message. Well, Eric Young, besides that sanity thing that lasted a couple of weeks, I think, on SmackDown, like, what was he really doing on the main roster? Like, I kind of forgot that he was on Raw. So the fact that he got released, it's not a surprise at this point. They just got to realize who do they need going forward, and they just cut away all the fat. 
Like Primo and Epico, they've not been on TV in how long? Like where have they even been? Super talented. Primo and Epico Cologne, the Colognes, so good. Their family's been in wrestling forever, right? Their father, well, uh, Primo's father, Epico, I think is a cousin, right? Primo's father, Carlos Cologne, the great legend. His brother, Carlito, you know? These guys are entrenched in the wrestling business. Like I said, they could go to Puerto Rico and work for the rest of their lives. They could show up in a another wrestling company like AEW and be a great addition to the tag team roster. Another, like, so many of these guys have been criminally underused by the WWE for years. Like, Primo and Epico are a tremendously ta talented tag team who were used for a while. You remember Los Matadores? Remember that? Remember that gimmick with El Torito? Remember that whole thing? When they fired Torito, Primo and Epico got disappeared. Like, those guys have been used in different variations in WWE for so long. They've been so good. But they never really found a spot. They never really used them on TV. So, you know, I'm I'm kind of happy that some of these people have been released from the WWE because I know how good they are, and maybe they're not happy. Maybe they're losing money, and I get it. I get that they're not happy. But the wrestling fan in me sees guys like Primo and Epico and Rusev, and I think, hey, these guys outside of WWE are finally going to be able to show their talent that I know that they have because – We've seen glimpses of it when they are allowed to show their talent in the WWE. So a lot of these guys, Anderson and Gallows, Primo and Epico, EC3, Zack Ryder, a lot of these guys are way more talented than the WWE ever allowed them to be. And now they're going to be able to show those talents in the real wrestling world. So it's bad. It sucks when you get fired. It sucks when you lose a high paying job for a WWE superstar. You know, it's the dream to be a pro wrestler and work for the WWE. It's rough, but it's clear that in 2020, you can make money outside of WWE as a pro wrestler. And a lot of these people are very, very talented and will have brighter futures outside of the WWE, hopefully financially as well. I know that creatively, brighter futures. Financially, I'm hopeful for them. You know, WWE pays a lot. You can't deny. It. They got great money. They're very rich. Well, I wouldn't say uh, 2020 is a good year for making money in wrestling because I think regardless of wrestling still going, it's, it's going to be really tough, I think, going forward for a lot of people because more than likely we're not going to get fans at events for a long time. So wrestling's not going to really have a surge for a very long time, I think. It's going to be rough for a lot of people going forward. Yeah, I agree with you. I don't think 2020 is going to be a year to make money in pro wrestling or otherwise. That's some of the on-screen talent, some of the wrestlers that were released, some of the backstage people that have been furloughed or out, 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 outright released. Uh, Kurt Angle, Billy Kidman, Mike Rotunda. That's uh, Bray Wyatt's dad. Uh, Pat Buck, right. Fit Finley. Uh, Sean Devari, Scott Armstrong, Sarah Stock, Shane Helms, Lance Storm all been released by the WWE. That is a long list. A lot of people that have been working for that company for a long, long time. Billy Kidman's been in the company since, what, the invasion in the early 2000s, right? Right. They, they, released, they released Mike Chioda, referee Mike Chioda. The guy's been in the company since, like, 1989. I saw a picture of Mike Chioda with Owen Hart and 123Kid and Tatanka from, like, the early 90s. That's how long kyoto has been in the company. Gone. They released Kyoto. That was surprising. I was like, really, Mike Kyoto? You can't find a job for him at Titan Towers or in a performance center? Something? Just taking a guess here, he was probably going to retire soon anyways. So I guess they just, you know, decided, well, you can be done now. He didn't ref that much anymore, so I guess there's something to that. But, wow, a lot of the backstage talent just let go. A lot of the uh, trainers, a lot of the producers, when you're reducing the staff, you know, everybody's going to feel it. But this was uh, one of the darkest days in the history of the WWE as far as 
the releases and how many people lost their jobs and how much talent was let go. Families separated as well. Let's not forget, you know, Sarah Logan was on the road with her husband. Uh, I think he's Eric or Ivar. Is he Eric or Ivar? He's Ivar. All right. Ivar from the Viking Raiders. Um, there was another one too. Uh, well, Lana's still with the company, right? Rusev's not. There are a few families well, that are being split up a little bit. It's not the end of the world for them. At least someone's still making money in the family. You are just cold, Johnny North. Just cold. Aiden English also released. Jerry Soto, I don't know who that is. One of the announcers also released. A lot of people being let go. Bray Wyatt, man. Your dad just got released. It's rough. Yeah, but all, all those producers, they're, they're going to be hired back, though. Some of them will be. Up. Not all of them. Heath Slater released by the WWE. That guy's been in the company forever. Yeah, but he's been there forever, so I'm sure he's made some money. Hopefully he saved it. Hopefully he did. We definitely hope so. Uh, hope everybody is doing all right as far as the releases from the WWE. It was uh, it was rough to watch. Some of them, you know, got the opportunity of a lifetime, and some of them will get that opportunity again, and some of them will move on to do bigger and better things in professional wrestling. That's just how it goes. That's how the cookie crumbles. Things keep moving, and life goes on. As the great Vince McMahon once said, "Life sucks." And then you die. It's a positive My question message. is, though, yeah, I guess it's positive somewhat. I guess that's just the reality of the situation. But my question is, what's going to happen for a guy like Roman Reigns, who has stated he doesn't want to wrestle now during this outbreak, and this could last a while. So is Roman Reigns ever going to wrestle again? Are they going to release Roman Reigns? No. You think they're going to release Roman Reigns? Are you crazy? Well, he's not going to do anything, though. He's not going to wrestle, right? So? He'll wrestle he's a Brock Lesnar schedule. Yeah, but Brock at least shows up and does something once in a while. Like, it looks like he's not going to do anything. He'll show up when he's good and ready, John. You really think they should release Roman Reigns? You think that's a wise move? One of the top guys in your company? Why would you do that? You think AEW might want to sign him? You think he might become the hottest free agent in wrestling? Like you can't release a guy like that just because he doesn't want to wrestle because he's concerned about his health. Like that's nonsense. Well, you wouldn't worry about AEW signing him because he doesn't want to wrestle during this. So AEW is not going to sign him because he's not going to wrestle for him. AEW would sign him and let him sit. So that when he's ready, he could come in. Are you kidding me? That's ridiculous. Vince McMahon releasing Roman Reigns would be the dumbest move he could possibly make right now. That that would be terrible. PR-wise, it would look terrible because you're releasing him because he's, you know, concerned about his own health and safety. And business-wise, it would be terrible because you'd lose one of the guys you've invested the most in. No, I don't think so. That's crazy, John. You came, you come up with a lot of crazy ideas. That's one of the craziest. He's the big dog. It's his yard. Hoo -ah. And if you watch WWE television, he's been erased from television. So I wouldn't be surprised. He'll be back, John. I would be shocked, okay? When Roman Reigns gets released, we will do another breaking news video. But for now... That's it. Watch Wrestling Uncensored this weekend. Watch Dave and Johnny live. We're going to talk about what Ronda Rousey said, and we're going to review the latest episode of Dark Side of the Ring, Jimmy Snuka and Nancy Argentino. What I've learned from this uh, season's episode of Dark Side of the Ring, if your name's Nancy, stay the fuck away from wrestling. I think that's a bad coincidence. Terrible. All right, John. Thanks, everybody, for watching. We love you big time.